Hey, it's Mark Podolsky, The Land Geek, with your favorite niche real estate website, thelandgeek.com. How about that, Scott Todd? I can do it. No www. Uh, On, go ahead. You, look, you took away my opening piece, so geez. On this week's Roundtable podcast, we have all the usual suspects. We've got the irascible technician, Eric Peterson. Eric, how are you? I'm good. Good to see you. We get the Zen master, breathe in the mailing, breathe out the market. Mike, good to see you. How are you? I'm feeling pretty good today, Mark. Thanks for asking. Good to see you. We got the nightcap OG dude buddy, Scott Bossman. Scott, how are you? Great, Mark. Good to be here. Great. And of course, I love it when you call me Big Papa, Tate Litchfield. Tate, how are things? Doing well. Excited about today's topic. I'm, I'm excited. By the way, you know, if you want to watch Tate work, go to landgeek.com forward slash lots. Look over Tate's shoulder. Not only will you be a better land investor, you might even get into cycling. And last but not least, the brain, the professor, your flight school Sherpa, Scott Todd from scotttodd.net, landmoto.com. Learn anything about anything, investorninjas.com. Scott Todd, how are you? I'm great, Mark. How are you? I'm great. I'm great. And uh, I like this this uh, this topic. So Tate, what are we talking about today? All right, well, we're gonna talk about uh, whether or not our Cyber Monday, Black Friday marketing campaigns were a success or a failure and what we learned from those, uh, those, uh, those email blasts that we did. So it's gonna be a good topic, lots to learn, lots to discuss. I love it, I love it because I know that you know, we talk, I, I think we talked about this. I know we talked about it with our, with our coaching clients and I'm seeing it in Basecamp that it's so important. You know, we, we talk about it all year long and then it sort of comes to this, this head. Like now it's here, Black Friday, Cyber Monday, and you really get to see in real time how well you kept up consistently with your email marketing. And those that kept up consistently with their email marketing, kept massaging their lists, giving them value, showing up consistently, I guarantee they got sales because their list was like, oh, I trust this person. The people that weren't consistent, it, they may not have had the same results, but I'd love to know. We'll start with the Zen master. Mike Zeno, how'd it go uh, with your, your marketing uh, for Cyber Monday, Black Friday? It did go well. I probably will be on the lower end of uh, the results. So we had to wait to see. I sold two properties, uh, but you know, it's two properties. So uh, we have a couple other properties that are uh, people looking at right now as well. But I think to me, one of the big, and we talk about this, all, we've talked about this a lot, is that there's a lot of noise going on over that weekend. Um, you know, we're getting hit pretty much left and right on our emails, right? So I think, uh, you know, what helped initially to sell the second property was uh, resending uh, the blast out several times because uh, I think you just got to fight through the noise. There seems to be a lot of noise going on. I mean, everybody, it's not just land, right? Everybody's looking to uh, to unload on those uh, uh, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday. So you got to do a lot to break through the noise. No, absolutely. Do you, next year, to break through the noise, you might start your your promotion a week early and you yeah. say, I don't even want to be in the noise. Yeah, no, I think we had talked about that once on here and I think it's a great idea. I haven't in, taken action on that, but you know, why not creating our own sort of, I mean, uh, I, when did even Cyber Monday start, Mark? Like it was always Black Friday. How long ago did that come into play? Like, could it be another thing? Could we bring up, invent like our own land day, right? You know what I mean? Possibly because I don't know. Cyber Monday, that's that's that happened after Black Friday, right? Black Friday was around for long. Am I wrong? I mean, so we can. Yeah, yeah. So, Black, so traditionally, it's, it's the Friday. So Thursday's Thanksgiving, and then that next day right. is Black Friday. Now, because of the pandemic, Black Friday essentially is just all cyber. I don't, I mean, I know the malls were, were open, but it wasn't like. No, they're not. The same. No. It wasn't the same thing. Nobody wanted to get together in these big, you know, I, I know no one was camping out at like midnight at Walmart for some doorbuster deal. They, they weren't doing the traditional no, no. Black Friday. Tents. 
Maybe we no should have like this seems to be a, a day of the every day seems to be like appreciation day for this, this for that. We should just have a land holiday. We should just make up a land holiday because every day of the year seems to be some sort of something, right? So I think we should have our own holiday, land. I I, I agree. We we I don't need know to when it would take be. this up, <laughs> but I think we got to have the land day. Well, yeah, I mean, don't, don't confuse it with Earth Day. It's different. I, you know, me. You know, my first thing that, that came to mind was like the Louisiana Purchase, right? Right. Like, like you know, kind of uh, think about okay, we're going to celebrate the Louisiana Louisiana Purchase, and so who's good with history? When was that? What month? I don't even know. Oh man, come on! It's eighteen fifty-four. Please, no, I'm just joking. I have no hey. idea. April 30th, 1803. Oh, look at that. Google to the rescue. Google. 430. Are, are you sure it was Google? Yes. You just, positive. Know, you just know it. Come on. I'm positive that that was Google. How, how would you know? Was it Bing? Was it Bing? <laughs> oh, <geez>. Was <laughs> it Was it Duck Duck Go? You love Duck, Microsoft. Duck, uh, mm. could, could have been Scott Todd's brain. It, yeah, he may just know it's that. Big. It's he big. It's big. Know that. That's right. We don't, we don't know. Yeah. Maybe Scott's got some Creole in his blood. Listen, you know, uh, big big brain, and you know, it's why Mike Zano wore the uh, you know the bald cap for you know. <laughs> October thirty first. Okay, go ahead. All right. So we we di we digress. Scott Bossman, how was your Black Friday Cyber Monday? I was decent. We had a couple sales as well. One cash deal uh, that that netted us about four thousand dollars, which was nice. And then uh, one terms deal. Um, and I would agree. We kind of hit the list multiple times. You know, uh, uh, you know, kind of along what what Mike was saying. I think Best Buy was sending me early Black Friday emails uh, a month ago. It's been black. It's been Black November basically at Best Buy. So uh, you know, we took a lesson from that and some other uh, other companies out there and and hit our list early with an early Black Friday special and hit them a few times. And uh, yeah, I, I'd say this Black Friday was a little bit quieter for us than previous ones. Um, but again, two sales. Uh, we're, we're satisfied with that. Look, two sales is nothing to, uh, to sneeze at, right? Yeah. Um, again, you didn't get shut out. So right. maybe the technician did get shut out. So let's go to him. Eric Peterson, how'd your Black Friday, Cyber Monday go? Well, before we talk about that, I want to talk about a um, some good news I had from a, one of my students this morning. He reached out to me and said, hey, uh, my Black Friday, Cyber Monday deal sold. And it just happened to be the first retail sale that he had made um, since coming into coaching. So that was kind of a double bonus for him, um, being able to, to get that done on the retail side. He wholesaled plenty of property prior to that. But um, it's always good to kind of get that retail sale under the belt and, and no better time than Black Friday, Cyber Monday. Um, I know he and I worked together back and forth as he was preparing those deals and talked about the important things to include in that deal. Um, like we talked about the other week, anchors. Um, so tell them why this is a good deal. Either show them another property that's priced at a higher price point or use your own price to anchor the discount that you're giving. Uh, we talked about urgency, having those countdown timers, et cetera. And it was effective for them. So, um, you know, whenever we get that kind of new news from our students, it's it's always exciting. And it's, it's good to see them um, just progressing and moving forward. Um, as for my Black Friday, Cyber Monday deals, um, we did really well. Um, we had planned ahead. Uh, we did not want to release those deals during the, the heat of Black Friday, if you will. Um, so our 
preview and deals went out about a week uh, a week beforehand. And um, as I said, we we did quite well. We we sold a, a number of properties and um, very happy with with what we did. Fantastic, fantastic. So, which feels better when you sell or when your students sell? Well, they both feel good, but in all honesty, like, I mean, when we sell property, it's just, you know, it's another one out of the inventory and, and it's, it's kind of a normal occurrence. So it's, it's almost better when a student sells a property. Um, it's more exciting for me anyways. No, no, it, it absolutely is. And, and when you say another one, I looked at Tate and I just, he just, you know, we're like, you know, DJ Cali. Yeah. Another, another one. one. Another one. Another one. That's like that's like just Eric in front of his computer. Another one. I'll throw that one in the geek bay. Another one. So Tay, let's go to you. How did how did the Cyber Monday Black Friday go? You know, it was good. Um, I'll agree with uh, Scott Bossman. It was a little bit quieter than years past. We were still able to make a few sales. Um, but uh, we're not complaining about that by any means. I feel like we learned a lot from this year's uh, lack of response in some cases. I feel like uh, my team didn't do quite a good enough job to stand out from the crowd. I feel like uh, Target and Best Buy and Walmart and every other email provider out there probably outmarketed us. And uh, we learned from that. We've taken some notes. We're going to make some adjustments and try to avoid getting buried next year because uh, Black Friday in the past has always been kind of one of those days where we sell eight, 10, 12 properties. And this year we got, we got three sales, which, Hey, three sales is three sales. That's a good day. But um, I think we have some uh, room for improvement there, but where I failed or didn't quite exceed our goals, other people were excelling. I, I like Eric, I got emails from two different, uh, land students where they absolutely crushed it, crushed it. Uh, one guy sold five properties. Um, the other guy, what was it? Nine, Eric, he sold, I think it's uh, nine or eight. Yeah. Was that Adam? Was, yeah, it was, yeah, Adam, I think it was eight or nine properties. I mean, he had one of the most, one of the most impressive weeks that I've ever seen. I mean, his, his passive went up tremendously, but the overall enterprise value of his business went up, I think, $80,000, something like that. It was, it was crazy. I mean, good on him. He was prepared. He came in with a strategy. He knew what he wanted to do, and he uh, executed on that. And he's one of those guys, Mark, that you, you made mention of early on, where he has been consistent with his deal of the week. He never misses a week. He shows up, even if it's the same property as the week before. He plays around with the pricing. And as a result, when his buyers got that email, they took action immediately. So good on him, man. Good on good on both those guys. Yeah, no, absolutely. Um, this is what Adam wrote. I sold eight lots in nine days and just hit sale number 50. Four of those were off of my Black Friday deal, two of which I haven't had any luck with. Bad road access. It was going to wholesale immediately after the sale ended, but I didn't have to because a guy from Hawaii bought both and just had his brother-in-law call to see what I have near the lots he bought. So possibly more sales to come from it. Um, I added 915 to my monthly and sold over $72,000. It's not, it's not a bad week. I mean, take that for, into for consideration, Mark. $915 in new passive income over nine days. $900. That's life-changing. And that's going to go on for years for him. Right. Right. That's just, yeah, it's, it really moves the needle. It just goes to show you what consistency does and execution does and how it can change your life. Um, it's, it's amazing. It really is. Um, I get such a sense of, of, of pride when I, when I see these emails come in, it's, it's, it's great. Uh, and like Eric, for me, it's it's way better than when we close a deal. It's way better um, now. Not that I don't like closing deals, I do, but 
this is way more gratifying. But you, you look like you're about to say something, Tate. No, I, I agree with you. It's just, you know, watching our students excel is, it's honestly one of the greatest things ever. I, I love it when they sell. Adam had a better better week than we did, and I couldn't be happier for him. There's no, there's no, there's a little bit of jealousy, but not much. Uh, I'm, <laughs> I'm happy that he sold a ton of property. Right. That's good on him. And it wasn't by chance. He worked for this, right? He built a system and his team executed. So good on him. Exactly. And, that, and that's what's so great about it. Is it's not like Adam's doing all the work. You know, he's got a full time gig. He's, he's on the business, not in the business. His team was the one that created all that value for him, which is even better. So he's solving not just his money problems, but his time problems as well, right. which, is, which is fantastic. Scott Todd, how was your Black Friday, Cyber Monday? Okay, well, um, we sold three properties uh, last week. They weren't like huge hits and like they weren't home runs. They were singles, you know, they, they, were, they were sales. Uh, I added about four or $500 to passive income over that time period. So, you know, how do you judge success? I mean, you know, it, it all depends. That's the way, right? Like it, 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 success is relative, but I did something different this year. So not only did I offer property on black Friday, cyber Monday, I shouldn't even, should I share this, this little of course. secret that I did? Of course. I mean, it doesn't hurt. All right, here we go. I also went to my buyers and I made them a deal. Listen, for every dollar extra that you pay in today through this event, I'll bump it up by 20%. So my cash collection was through the roof. Like from my existing buyers, I collected $10,000 in cash. Okay. So, you know, I can go buy some Christmas presents now. That, that's a good promo. So walk us through this. So you, you email the existing buyers list yeah. and said for every dollar, like you prepay today mm -hmm. on your note, I'm yeah. going to bump it up an extra 20%. That's right. Yeah. So. Eric Peterson, not a bad idea. Absolutely not. I love it. And I think if you want to collect cash. Right? Yeah. If you want to collect cash. If you don't you want to collect deal, cash, don't do it. You need funding for? Why not uh, see if you can get it from your customer base? That's right. Wow. $20,000 or $10,000, sorry, $10,000 is what we collected over that week. In one, in one day? In a weekend. In a weekend. In a weekend. Jeez, that's better than a sharp stick in the eye, Scott Todd. I know. E yeah. Even for you, you know, that's like two meals at Burns Steakhouse for you. Yeah, not bad. Not bad. Two not meals. Bad. Two meals. That's it. That's all I get. A five thousand dollar meal. Jeez. I've seen the way you drink. Oh boy, I haven't had a drink since. Uh, honestly, last time I had a drink was a, the last time I saw you and Tate back in February. That's the last drink I had, actually. Really? Even yeah. any alcohol, you're off alcohol. Yes, that's true. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You're, yeah. You're, you know, I'm, so I'm just donuts. Me, I'm hoping it helps me grow some hair again. <laughs> <laughs> I will say though, it's, you know, for sleep, you know, it's like the best thing is not to drink. Well, it's we're, really we're got to be worth the topic, it. But I think you, I think you're the one that actually told me that, um, for every drink you have, like uh, if you had one drink a year, I'm uh, uh, sorry, one drink a week, like the number of calories that that adds up to, I, I forgot. It's like it adds 10 pounds or something like that. I don't know. I, I, I forgot the exact quote that you gave, but I was like, holy cow, that's a lot. So eh, I'd rather eat, uh, you know, eat Cheez-Its than, than drink. Yeah. I mean, the only time I'll drink is on nightcap now and very little. Yeah, there you go. That's very, I only drink at night. Oh, yeah. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> 
it's got it's got to be worth it. I've become such a sleep nerd now. Now I'm not drinking coffee in the morning. I barely drink alcohol. Consistently go to bed 10:30, wake up at 6:30. I got the Uller. I've got the little Uller? blue blocking yeah glasses. I've re I've really Ooh. geeked out Ooh. on sleep. What's an Uller? See, this is a good Christmas gift actually. Go to chilipad.com or chilipadtechnology.com and um, and check out the Uller. So it's it just cool. It keeps you cool, like 67, 68 degrees all night. What what if I don't like that temperature, but my wife does? So you get so you have two zones, right? So you can get one like or two, and then she has her zone. You have your zone. But what's nice is I don't even wake up now with an alarm. Um, it just naturally heats up. I have a schedule and it, my body heats up and I just naturally wake up and it's great. I'm, you know, solid sleep. So I don't know how we got off this topic, Scott Todd. We're talking about Cyber Monday, Black <laughs> Friday. And you know, all, all, your, all your cash uh, deals, yeah. which is great. So, Tate, are you going to implement that? Do you like, like, do you like that strategy? Yeah, I like it. I think if you need cash, that's a, that's a home run right there. Eric Peterson? Absolutely. Like I said, uh, you know, you're looking to fund a deal. I think it's the, the perfect solution to, to go out to your existing customers and, and bring in some extra cash that uh, you didn't have access to otherwise. Mike Zeno, what do you think? I'm surprised you gave that away. That's pretty uh, high level stuff right there. I, I really like it. And uh, I just typed in the Chile technology. So they have cyber week sales and a pop up comes up and says their their uh, cyber Monday is extended. So they got some good marketing going on there. Yeah, yeah. Now you, you got to compare them. There's another one out there. I think it's eight zero. They got a mattress. But they also have a pad. They just started came out with a pad. So you might want to see, I forgot what, but sleep there's like, they're like the two companies. Something? Sleep eight, sleep eight. Yeah. Tim Ferriss is, is uh, promoting this one. So there you go. Um, Scott Boston, what do you think of uh, Scott Todd's strategy? Oh, I like it. Uh, that's, that's Scott Todd. He's always bringing new stuff. I love it. Yeah. So if you're listening to this podcast, <laughs> that's like a $10,000 tip right there. Yeah. Which I don't know it. I mean, Scott Todd, is that our tip of the week? Uh, I actually have a better tip. Well, I, don't, I shouldn't say better. I have a tip of the week too, so we could use that one too. All right. So, tip of the week, I uh, just want to give a little shout out to our sponsor, which is Flight School. Learn how the next 16 weeks can literally transform your life. Start building your passive income machine with Scott Todd as your flight school Sherpa. He's done it thousands of times. Go up that mountain of land investing quickly, safely, efficiently, the tuition ain't gonna cost you nothing, nothing, because you're gonna make it back 180 days or less, guaranteed. Just show us your work, schedule a call with the Zen Master, the Nightcap OG, go to landgeek.com forward slash training, learn more, thelandgeek.com forward slash training. Scott Todd, what's your tip of the week? All right, Mark, I always say, that um, I will take payment any which way I can, right? Like it doesn't matter to me. I'll take it. If I can figure out how to take gold, I'll take gold. If I can figure out how to do, I don't know, whatever, I'll figure it out. But, you know, right now, Bitcoin is blowing up. And of course, I wouldn't mind taking payment in Bitcoin e either, but which is kind of easy to do for someone who's on Bitcoin. But what if I didn't want to hold on to the Bitcoin? What if I just wanted to convert it to cash? Check out this tip. Check out nash.io forward slash payment. And I just gave it to you in the chat too. Nash.io uh, forward slash payments. And what they will do is they will basically allow someone to pay you with a Nash link that will convert it from Bitcoin right to cash for you and make it super simple. So it's an easy way of taking Bitcoin or crypto, not just Bitcoin, any type of crypto for your payments. 
Wow, we should integrate this into GeekPay. Do they have an API? I think they do, yeah. Let's see. Developers. This is a great, yeah. Look at this, Exchange APIs. Yeah, there you go. And it's it. free of transaction fees. Go figure that one. And it's free, and it's free transaction fees. I would take Bitcoin. I just want Bitcoin. We should we could do a whole round table on Bitcoin. Yeah, do you have to convert it? The economics of it. They convert it automatically. Oh. So there's no uh, option. What if what if you didn't want to convert it? I don't know. Then just take uh just tell people give them give people your uh like your QR code or your wallet or whatever and let them deposit the money. Wow. Eric Peterson, you're almost like a, a Bitcoin millionaire. <laughs> Is he, is he like the twin brothers? Like the Winklevoss twins, yeah. 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 There's the Winklevoss twins, Eric Peterson, and uh, That's it. Paul Tudor Jones. <laughs> where, where was the Bitcoin when we had that boot camp discussion about buying it, and where is it now? Had we taken action at that moment? Do you know where it was at that time? That was a while ago. Yeah, it was, it was like four or 6,000 then. And where is it now? It's like just under 20. 20. Yeah. I think it was closer to six when we had that discussion. Yeah, but again, if you're listening to this, we're not giving any financial advice. I just want to give a disclaimer. <laughs> right. our, our advice is buy land. Right. It's the only asset that lasts. We don't know about the long-term viability of Bitcoin. There's a lot of risks with it. I think the biggest risk is going to be governmental risk. Um, but the technology is pretty solid and the, you know, the supply demand of it is what is really compelling about it. There's a fixed supply and a lot of smart money is going into it. Again, this is not any type of financial advice for Bitcoin. Um, I thought this was a really fun and valuable podcast to talk about. Hopefully people are getting value out of it. If you are, please let us know. All you have to do is subscribe, rate, review the podcast. Send a screenshot of that review to support at thelandgeek.com. We're going to send you the $97 wholetailing course, how to double your money, 30 days or less for free. Just email us, support at thelandgeek.com, the screenshot of that review. All right, guys, are we, are we good? We're good, Mark. We're good. Let's do this. One, two, three. Let, let, let freedom, freedom, freedom ring. ring. Oh, that was bad. I don't know. I feel like we shouldn't even do any bonus content now. We just talked about Bitcoin, burn steakhouse. I, I do want to know something though. Like, Mark, why does your backdrop say annual fish fry? I must what? be some Star, Star Wars thing. You guys see that? I see July it right there. 27th. Annual fish fry. Annual fish fry, July 27th. <laughs> it does say that. What? It's very, very faint. Yeah. yeah. Annual fish fry. Does, does this one have anything on there? I that still says, not watch The Mandalorian, Scott Ball. That one says oh. www. Dot is not is not needed. <laughs> <laughs> I think you better catch up, Mark, because there are a lot of spoilers spoilers all over the place. You got to catch. Oh, up. okay. I'm yeah. I'll definitely catch up. Um, right. I think this one says short Microsoft stock. No, that's not because what it the, says. That's the not surface what is it going says. down. No, I don't see that. I don't see that at all. Instead, instead of coal in your stocking for the, the naughty list, you could just give them a surface. I knew that was coming. <laughs> and on that note, Wh see everybody why, later. Why would you want to do that, man? Like the surface is the greatest. Here we go again. Let's just, let's just rehash 2020. Let's go to the raid. Let's pull out the razors, the surface, and... Uh, 
That's Jeez. next. That's next week. We're gonna re, we're gonna rehash all of 2020. Next week roundtable. It's gonna be epic. I'm very excited yeah. for it. Stay tuned, everybody. Land Geek Nation. Thanks, everybody. See you guys.